My name's Jason, this is the WDS Originals YouTube channel and behind me here is my E92 M3. And in today's video, we're gonna go through all the fabrication involved in getting this V10 and DCT gearbox in the E92 M3. And if you haven't seen the previous episodes on this car, head over to the channel or alternatively, click the link in the description that will take you to the playlist of this V10 E92 M3 build. And if you enjoy today's content, I'd kindly ask you to hit that subscribe button as it massively helps the channel and there's plenty more content to come on this car and plenty of other BMW projects that we've got on the go. But for now, it's time to jump straight back in into this V10 E92 M3 build and discuss all the fabrication that was required to get that V10 in the E92 M3. I started by removing this subframe, which would enable us to hover the V10 engine in that engine bay and also mean that Toby, our welder and fabricator, could come over and start mocking up some engine mounts and also modify that subframe. So now with Toby here, we managed to get the V10 in and supported on a brace and started measuring up exactly how we're gonna modify this subframe. And it wasn't long before that plan was now being put into action. And as you can see, we modified the back of the subframe in order to take the sump, which was also modified too, and also that steering rack, and then had to modify the front of the subframe too. Now, in order for us to do this, we offered the subframe up to the car and partially held it in place, which enabled us to start calculating exactly how we were going to do this. Once again, we let Toby loose, but this time we let him loose with a welder. And it wasn't long until we started seeing this subframe taking shape. Now on video, this may well look like an easy task, but I can assure you, we spent days and many hours late into the night faffing around with this subframe. And between us, we reckon we had this subframe engine combo in and out of the car 25 times. So yes, this took us hours to get right, but the end result was so worth it. We now had a subframe for the E92 M3 capable of taking that V10 engine. So with the new subframe and the engine arms attached, it was time to remove that engine brace once and for all. And now for the first time, we actually had the V10 properly sat in the E92 M3. This meant we were able to start working out things like the steering rack and also addressing the steering column and working out any further modifications that were required. And when it came to this steering column, we had quite a nightmare. We had to make it incredibly thin and also extend the UJs. But in doing so, we then found that we were fouling on the chassis. This meant we needed Toby to come back round and make some adjustments to the shell. So again, the engine came out, Toby came round, and we had another late night getting this all sorted. The following day was time to address the exhaust system. So here you can see the standard E92 M3 back box that we've cut the flanges off to weld the V-bands to so we can make a nice full exhaust system. We also did the same for the headers and then proceeded to make the centre section. And just like that, another of the most difficult jobs ticked off the list. And what better way to celebrate than going and buying a new set of wheels. These CSL wheels were powder coated by Matt from Mad Alloys and he's done a fantastic job. Remember guys, if you want your wheels sorted, make sure you quote Jason from WDS Originals and he'll sort you out on the price. The link to his website and his contact details are down below in the description. Not only had I treated this car to a set of new wheels, but I'd also bought a whole host of new gaskets and bolts from BMW. This was because I needed to remove the engine one more time in order to fit the DCT gearbox properly. Now, as you can see here, we do actually have the DCT box attached to the V10. This is because the bell housing bolt pattern is exactly the same between the V10 engine and the E92 V8 engine. So that gearbox bolts straight up. But there's one big issue. When you go to put a flywheel in, it fouls on the crankshaft. So what this means is you need to file down the crank. Now, of course, the best way of doing this is taking the whole crank assembly out and giving it to a machine shop. Now, personally, I was a bit too late to establishing that this was going to be a problem and I'd already done the rod bearings and various other things. So I did a bit of research myself and looked into it and various other people have done the exact same thing that I'm doing, which is simply filing it down yourself. Now, of course, if you do decide to do this, you do need to make sure that it is dead straight and is perfectly within its tolerances either side. 
the reason for that is where this crankshaft will be spinning at very high RPM. If it's not cut dead straight or there's some imbalances, technically it will add additional strain to the rod bearings. And as we know, these are already a weak point on this engine. So make sure you spend some time with a vernier and a straight edge, getting this exactly right if you do do this yourself. Of course, my official advice would be take it to a machine shop. I do not recommend you do what I'm doing, but this is my personal engine and my personal risk. Good enough. Now that we had the flywheel torque to spec and the DCT box fitted, we removed all the protection that we've put in place and started fitting all the new gaskets. Now for the next couple of minutes, we switch to POV on my Meta glasses. Now this is a new style of filming for me and something that I'm experimenting with. So if you guys like it, drop a comment down below and I'll do more of it. If you dislike it, again, let me know and of course, we'll proceed accordingly. Now we have this engine successfully mounted in the car, it's time to start working out the ancillaries, like all the coolant pipes, where we're gonna put the header tank, and also things like the air intake pipes as well. So the long and short of it is that V10 is now successfully mounted in the E92 M3, but we've got a lot of work to do. But for now, I'll leave it at that, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, make sure you go and hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with all the content. I just want to say a massive thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in next week's episode.